In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed loud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the scars in the sky and hurled them down to earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son a male child, destined to rule all nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled to the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Be to God. A responsorial psalm. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen stands at the right hand arrayed in gold. The queen, the queen takes her place at your right hand in the gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are born in the gladness and joy. They enter the palace with the king. 
The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead also came through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. But each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then, at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven. A chorus of angels exalt. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled through the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lonely servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who hear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with great things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. On November 1st, 1950, Pope Pius XII, from the chair of St. Peter, put into words a belief that Christians as early as the first century held as truth. Those words, the Immaculate Mother of God, the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. The Holy Father avoided saying if she had died or was still alive when her precious Son carried her body and soul into eternal glory. We rely on tradition to provide the things that scripture does not give us. One such tradition, taught by the Orthodox and Eastern churches, said that as her time grew short, all the surviving apostles except Thomas were present as her, at her side as she died and was buried. Three days later, miraculously transported from India where he had been preaching, 
Thomas the apostle, the apostle insisted on seeing the body of the Blessed Virgin. When the tomb was open, it was found to be empty. The tradition goes on to say from this that the apostles judged that her body had been taken into heaven. While studying to become Catholic through the RCIA program, my eyes were open to the truth in the church's teaching regarding devotion to the Blessed Virgin, her immaculate conception and glorious assumption, and somehow it made a great deal of sense to me. By the example of her life, we find joy through service, peace in sacrifice, how to live in grace, and most of all, devotion to her son, Jesus, and our Redeemer. By her assumption, body and soul into heaven, we have a perfect picture of what is to come. We are given the assurance of hope for our own resurrection. Mary's complete obedience to God's command, her eternal yes to the service of God, and her undying, unchanging love for her son provides for us the true picture of the beauty of Mother Mary. This beauty, her nature free from sin, from the, her conception is a signpost pointing to her glorious assumption. As children, we were drawn to our earthly mother for care and protection. She clothed us, provided food, ensured the cleanliness and health of our bodies. This relationship forever shaped our lives. Here today, we celebrate a very special mother, the mother of Jesus and our mother. Just as we are drawn to our earthly mothers, we have been drawn here this morning in devotion to her to absorb, observe the memorial of Mary's assumption into heaven. Pope Benedict XVI told us, by complete contemplating Mary in heavenly glory, we understand that the earth is not the definitive homeland for us either, and that if we live with our gaze fixed on eternal goods, we will one day share in this same glory. As Christians, we accept that unless Jesus returns in glory, each of us will face death. But we also believe that this death is not the end all. It is not the last word. We must see by the assumption of the Blessed Mother that death is the passageway to the promise of Christ that Mary became the first to share. Her assumption echoes the meaning of Christ's ascension, ever reminding us that we were meant from creation by God to dwell body and soul with God in heaven. From the cross, amidst his suffering, Jesus gave each of us his mother to be our mother. We are assured that Mary carries us all in her heart. She is ever aware of each of us and lovingly brings us to her son, praying for his blessing on all. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place, by faith and devotion, and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all, all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear and for the daughters of Mary, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with the prayer of praise and honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary this day. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God, forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, but the praise of the Lord is the same. For our good and good of all church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed and Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, May our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. If you, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sitting down your spirit.
Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, I drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, that your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Let not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks God. Prayer to St. Michael for our families. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us to battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you again, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking to ruin our souls. Amen. The divine praise protects against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name.